The first PowerPoint set is only to introduce what electromagnetics, the wording, what does it mean, and what are the required background information that you need to have in order to survive and maybe excel, right? So this is a very short lecture note, only maybe 10 pages, extremely easy to understand. But there are a lot of knowledge behind probably every slide, okay? And as I mentioned before, due to the virus, I cannot really travel, so we have lots of time for class. So my pace would be slower as compared to you. So what is electromagnetism? So the very first statement, so these are something I came up with. You are free to come up with your own explanation and, and definitions, right? So my first definition for electromagnetism is the study of electric charges, both in rest and in motion. So why am I separating the two? Probably you learned it before. Starting from high school, in your third year of high school, you already know that once you have a charge, it actually establishes some kind of field distributions. Okay? So if you have a single charge with positive sign, that charge would emit a lot of so-called E-field lines. Okay? That's something you already know. But that kind of picture is only true when the charge is not moving, right? So what is going to happen when, well, somehow you find a way to make the charge move at certain velocity? constant or time varying, what is going to happen in that case? For that, you probably don't know the answer right now. But you can be rest assured, by the end of the semester, you will know the answer to that, okay? So the way this textbook is organized is for electric field, we first learn the steady state. Nothing is moving. And then for magnetic field, also time stationary. Nothing is moving. Okay? And then in the end, something moves. Okay? Of course, you might ask yourselves if you have a charge in steady state motion, it's moving at a constant velocity that is equivalent to a steady state current, okay? So if you really have a constant velocity, that gives rise to some kind of current. Maybe I should use a capital letter. Current, which is defined as how many charges are passing through a surface in certain time, right? So if you have a charged particle that moves with a constant velocity, then you have a steady state current, okay? So that is going to be covered after we learn the steady state electric field. So we will learn also the steady state current. But let me try to emphasize this. Have you ever thought about how to make steady state current? I mean, how to make a charge moving at a constant velocity? If you think about it, you'll probably understand, I mean, almost everything being covered in this textbook. 
at least for the front parts, are all not ideal. It's only for you to understand the phenomenon, okay? But they're too perfect, so they are non ideal or non practical. They're too ideal and non practical, okay? So ask yourselves how to create a charge in steady state motion. Ask yourself that. We will introduce electric and magnetic fields. So the way this textbook is designed is to introduce the fields, these two fields, starting from in free space. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, in vacuum. And you have E field and M fields. Then the textbook will try to tell you what is going to happen if you have some matter. For example, we have air or we have water, but you still have the fields, but they are not distributed in the same way as in vacuum. Okay? So we learn things in free space first and then in materials. All right? And of course, both electric field and magnetic fields are some kind of way of energy delivery. So you can view the generation of these two fields as a way to store your energy, like the battery you use every day, right? Like the, L the LCD, the LED panel you use every day. They consume power, okay? So whenever you have light, you have waves, you have energies being delivered or stored, right? And then once you have the fields, you also have forces. Does anyone remember what is the proper mathematical de description to electric force? Something you learned in high school and for your first year at Tsinghua. You still learn basic physics, I assume. The force is a vector, the charge you have, and the field, the charge experiences, right? So that's a very simplified version of the force. But what about magnetic force? Usually you don't remember how mathematic, magnetic force can be formulated, okay? So we will also cover, cover about the force. Yeah, the last thing. When the semester comes to the end, everything that you have le earn, learned will sum up and somehow you will try to understand in certain space. So you both have electric field and magnetic field and they're both time varying. What is going to happen? You would have waves, waves travel. Stationary fields do not travel, okay? So this is the major point. If you have something in rest, which is time invariant, nothing's moving, then you probably cannot deliver energy from one location to the next, okay? So these are basic quantities. It's for you to Go back home and redigest. Redigest means you le learned it before, so I don't need to spend more time. Okay? Now, these are constants. For E fields in materials, materials are somehow quantified by their permittivity. Okay? Epsilon. It's too early to tell you that. Okay? Magnetic field, magnetic materials are categorized by their mu, permeability, okay? So I can skip those for now. We will come back later. I only want to emphasize one thing. Have you ever seen this equation before? C is 
the speed of waves in vacuum. So C is 3 approximately times to the eighth meters per second. So these two constants in vacuum are somehow defined so that the multiplication taking the square and inverse gives you the speed of waves in vacuum. So these are defined, defined values. Okay? So C equals frequency times lambda zero. So this is something you learned from maybe middle school. You're all smart, right? I can tell. So C equals F times lambda zero. So let me rewrite these two mathematical equations. V equals F times lambda. Okay. So now it's for you to answer my question. What is the major difference? between these two equations, or these two equations, they are the same. What's a major difference between these two equations? So my philosophy is the most effective way to learn is you are teaching yourselves. If you are able to say something out loud to yourself, which makes sense, then you remember it forever, okay? So look at these two equations. There are something similar or identical and something different. So what is the same? You have total of six variables and two of them are the same, right? So that F is the frequency, okay? That's the frequency. So what's the difference between C and V? Oh, by the way, I'm a very nice teacher. Whenever I ask a question, usually the answers are hidden somewhere in the slide. Okay? So what is V? You can read it out loud. Okay? You can teach us English as well. So what is V? The speed of the waves in certain material. So C and V are actually different. So this is telling you, if you have certain magnetic or electromagnetic wave that's propagating, depending on the medium it's propagating in, the speed would be different, right? So C and V are actually different. The fastest medium a wave can travel in is in vacuum, okay? If you have something so you can no longer have vacuum. The speed of light would be reduced, okay? So something you can write, you should write, is V somehow is smaller or equal to C, okay? So if that is true, can you tell yourselves, okay, because we are running into the, um, given the fact V, the speed of wave in certain material, is guaranteed to be lower than C, what is the relationship between lambda and lambda zero? So take the next 10 minutes and try to teach yourself how to relate this two, and then you can remember forever.